I am in Boston. I am here to blues dance. I've come all the way from Pittsburgh to be at Sweet Molasses Blues. It's a three day long festival with dances and dance classes that moves from venue to venue. A few hundred other dancers are here from all over the East Coast and beyond. I don't normally do well at parties full of strangers, especially as a divorced 21 year old single parent. My brain always tells me that I'm different from everyone else and they all know it. The social rules of a party are impenetrable. Blues dancing is great. I know when I'm following the rules of blues dancing. And even though I'm new, I'm good at it. People want to dance with me. I get to connect with people without ever needing to figure out how to say more than a few words to them. So I am very excited to escape for a weekend full of dancing. I was out until two on Friday night at classes from noon to five on Saturday, danced until four on Sunday morning, back to classes from one to six, and now we're on the third night of dancing. At midnight on Sunday night, the last night of the festival, we migrate to Chinatown for the late night. The venue is up a narrow staircase to the third floor, and it's this weird space that a bunch of bike messengers are living in. There are four bedrooms on opposite sides around a giant central room. There's graffiti murals on the walls. There's bikes hanging from a high ceiling. The floor is wood, but it's totally uneven and poking up in different places. And there are over 100 dancers packed into this space. It's hot. It's Boston in July, so it's probably 80 degrees and humid outside when the dance starts. The venue has no AC and terrible ventilation. So when I walk into the room, I'm hit by a wall of heat and humidity, and I'm immediately sweating. I dance with someone, and they're sweating. And now I'm covered not only in my sweat, but their sweat too. Then the song ends, and I dance with someone new, and I now give my sweat and the last person I dance with sweat. And my new dance partner is giving me their sweat and all the sweat of all the people that they just danced with. And it's so packed that I can hardly move without bumping into someone. So I'm sweating on all the people around me, and everything is just sweat. <laughs> it's awesome. This is what dancing should feel like. The sweat connects me to every other person in the room. I need the connection. My divorce was finalized four months ago. I got a custody order two months ago. I'm three months away from realizing that that thing that my ex did that one time was sexual assault. I'm four years away from realizing that all those other times were too. The wounds make every human interaction feel dangerous, except for dancing. And right now, I'm dancing the best that I ever have. I've been building a physical connection to a room full of people for two and a half days. I've picked up their movements and ideas. I'm tired, but I'm moving, and the dance happens without thinking. It flows out of me. So I'm not just dancing with my partner, but with everyone in the room. I dance with Talia, who I just met on Saturday. At a social dance, you dance a song with someone, and then you wander off and find someone else to dance with, and you dance with lots of different people. But Talia and I keep coming back to each other. There's this negotiation. Is it weird? Is it cool if we keep asking each other to dance? There's 100 other people you could be dancing with, and I don't want to keep you from them, but like this right here is really good. Over the course of the last 36 hours, we've talked about dancing and leading and following and the really good dancers we're watching. We're both relatively new to this dance scene, a bit giddy about it, and we're both kind of good at it. I've discovered that even though I'm dude-shaped, I really, really enjoy following. It's scary and awkward and hard to ask for because people have expectations and I have internalized toxic masculinity. But there's a subset of dancers at Sweet Molasses who are into switch dancing. Not only all genders leading and following, but switching roles in the middle of a dance. And sometimes you can get moments where the entire lead follow relationship breaks down and you're just dancing and you're not quite sure who's leading what and who's following it. Talia is one of those people. Dancing with her feels a bit like falling in love. Not falling in love with her, but falling in love with the moment, the music, the movement, the room full of people. When I follow her, there is nothing else but this moment. I close my eyes, and there's her and me as an extension of her. It's bliss. Following Talia feels like being put back together. I have so much pain from events that were beyond my control, and there's so much fear in my fight to regain control. For this moment, I put the control in her hands. I feel seen without ever having to explain myself. I feel ethereal and beautiful and worthy. 
I find her extremely attractive. The way she carries herself, the way her movement holds a depth of emotion, an assertive push of the hip, a posture that asks, are you ready for this? A movement that waits way past the end of the beat then catches up on its own time, in time, her gentle and thoughtful attentiveness. The way I can close my eyes and tell exactly where every bit of her body is, from the angle of her shoulders to the spot where her feet hit the floor. I really want to kiss her. I don't know how to make that happen. Maybe she wants to kiss me too, but I don't know. Kissing feels dangerous. The feeling crawls up the back of my neck. Survival instincts start to kick in. My bliss begins to turn into something hard and cold. I breathe. I remind myself that I don't have to kiss her. There's a brokenness in not being able to think about kissing someone without panic creeping in. It's hard to admit. But three days of moving meditation have given me the perspective to let go. I decide that instigating is too much to process. I am having a great time, and this is good enough. I've had amazing dances with an amazing dancer. I can keep my bliss. I dance a bit with a few more people, and then my knees ache, so I go downstairs and out in the alley. Between the buildings, there's a guy on a resonator guitar and a guy with a harmonica, and then somebody else comes down and starts singing, and there are seven or eight couples dancing a slow drag, and it's so fucking good, and it's 2.30 in the morning on a Monday. <laughs> Where the fuck am I? Who are these people? How does this exist? I'm overwhelmed and just want to interact with people and feel too much to interact with people. My neck is crawling again. Do I belong here? Am I safe? I decide again to accept the moment as it is and accept my limitations. I sit and watch. The sun starts coming up just a little bit at 4.30. I'm feeling bittersweet. It's an almost perfect night. I'm trying to convince myself to let go of the almost. Talia comes out. She's like, hey, I'm leaving. I'm like, yeah, OK. <laughs> we hug. She says, there's something I was thinking about doing, and I think I'll regret it if I don't do it. I say, OK. She kisses me. <laughs> I take a sharp breath in. I accept the pressure of her lips on my lips, of her body into mine. It's at the same time exciting and soothing. The kiss fills my consciousness. I live in it, receiving, responding, letting her lead me. I close my eyes, and there's her, and there's me, and there's a blinding brightness. We continue for a few moments, and then she steps back, she says bye, and she leaves. I lean against a lamppost. I look up and see geometric patterns of the fire escapes against the slowly brightening sky, and I drink it in. The shapes, the night air, the bliss, sweat, and connection. I linger, and I let the feeling last for as long as it can. Yeah. Jesse O'Sullivan, everybody, Jesse.